Hello, everybody. My name is Sam Song. I'm associate professor at the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department. Uh, I presented a kind of a similar kind of a, a talk uh, one and a half a year ago. So I'm going to go through another overview, but some of the updates I made, uh, I'm going to introduce to you today. So the title of this uh, presentation today is Robotic Interventions and Biomedical Systems for Healthcare. It can be a uh, complex or even very simple device we make to impact the, our healthcare, especially surgery. So this is about me. I've been in uh, several places before come to um, UCF. Um, kind of a half of the, my career was in a uh, hospital and half of them were actually in a kind of university lab setup. So the research area, what I do here is that technologies between patient and physician. So it can be complex again, but can be very simple piece of, piece of plastic. Often when we talk to surgeons, they're all looking for something very uh, handy little uh, kind of a, uh, you know, little devices rather than complex robots, whatever. And quite often they actually impact uh, surgical outcome significantly. So the agencies that are applying for my funding is NIH, of course, and NSF, and the DOD has their own uh, medical related research funding, pretty large. And also, I'm trying to get a, a funding from the Department of Health of our Florida. They have a, some set aside funding for the uh, cancer related research. And I kind of apply the foundations and also trying to find the collaboration with industry fund. And I teach here 3022 uh, Introduction to Computer Aided Engineering and a 4024 computer, uh, Engineering Design Practice, mostly focused on the uh, computational design analysis and manufacturing kind of courses. Little over about 1,000 students I have to deal with every year. And I run a pre college summer research program. Uh, I invite uh, a few high school students during the summer to let them experience about the college kind of research. Uh, but uh, unfortunately this year, last year, because of the COVID situation, I couldn't offer it, but I hopefully I can get them back soon again. So these are kind of a current project I'm gonna actually explain later. So um, these are the kind of a typical or the main focus of, um, of my project currently. So this here is the MRI guided targeted prostate biopsy and focal therapy. So which I developed is a robot, robotic device that can be run under the MRI to guide the needle to get the uh, precise position of the uh, cancerous tissue within uh, prostate. And then you can deliver that as well with uh, some focal therapy, which means that you put the needle in and freeze or burn it. So these uh, devices uh, and the procedures we developed when I was in Brigham and Women's Hospital, but unfortunately this was research, but not really implemented in a real clinic. So my main focus at the moment is that to bring this technology down to here in Florida to actually uh, materialize it in a real situation. To do that, we have to simplify a lot of uh, kind of technologies and also make a streamline of the procedures to make it possible. So this is actually something that I'm thinking about applying for uh, Florida Department of Health uh, uh, funding. They actually uh, support that for local cancer, uh, cancer patients. So here uh, I obtained NIH, NIBR VR15 uh, uh, some time ago, and we're running that uh, grant now to uh, provide the preliminary studies uh, to make the sizable funding for following kind of a phase. So um, we've been, I've been looking for uh, radiologists or urologists or related kind of a physicians uh, it was really very hard to find because a lot of the physicians down in Florida are very, very busy for their patients, not much time they have for the research. But luckily, very recently, I actually in contact with uh, some of the uh, neurologists and the actual clinic uh, physicians. So I'm actually building up the collaboration for this summer and fall kind of proposal with them together. And this ALF-15, as it designed for, um, I have uh, uh, many undergraduate students actually involved in this research and funded uh, through this program. The next main program that I uh, run is the uh, orthopedic surgery. So as you can see, this robotic devices can actually uh, cut out a uh, bone damaged tissue very precisely and minimally invasively. And also you can transplant that from the uh, side of that knee or any joint that is actually healthy. So this is called the robotic orthochondral orthographic transplantation, which we recently funded by DOD 
and um, uh, the DOD Discovery Award, and which was actually based on the uh, our own Research Foundation Gap Award I got a uh, couple of years ago, a few years ago. And we are developing this prototype to materialize these uh, surgical procedures to be realistic for uh, not just for the military, but also civilian healthcare. So there, um, I have a very close uh, kind of collaboration with uh, an orthopedic surgeon at VA uh, who has an uh, uh, engineering background in undergraduate from MIT. So we had a really good relation. We are developing uh, larger grants now. And we do have, I'm seeking a medical image expert uh, to handle with the uh, MRI or CTO uh, the images to plan all these uh, procedures. So that's uh, something that I'm looking for now. And then uh, slightly uh, kind of a uh, different project, but focus on the kind of similar robotic technology. I'm planning to put in an R1 in June. And next uh, kind of main focus of our lab is the um, telemedicine. Telemedicine, people normally thinking about just uh, video conferencing really, but uh, we trying to add some more uh, perceptions in there. So the main target for what we're trying to uh, implement is that the touch. So it's not just the seeing it, but actually you want to touch patient, obviously not possible. So we're trying to get the pressure map from, from the patient and we create that on a fake skin simulator so that the physician from distance can feel the kind of similar texture or palpation through the uh, patient. So to realize that we use the uh, kind of emerging technology of a granular jamming means that you put the uh, granules inside like a coffee beans and things like that, and you suck the air out, it, everything becomes a little hard. But you don't want to uh, change the dimension of the uh, that touch part. So we actually suck in the uh, uh, volume from the downside only. So the top portion of the nodule, whatever you want to touch it through this uh, fake skin, we just the change the stiffness um, without changing the dimension. So this is a palpation part I put it in and I collaborate with the uh, Dr. Uh, Hansen Menzi, who's uh, 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 providing his uh, bioacoustics technology here. Also, we're trying to put it in so that in telemedicine, replacing the uh, patch type of uh, electronic uh, body sound hearing rather than stethoscope, uh, the uh, scope of people we use. So there, we expect to have a much more uh, wider frequencies of a body sound we can capture. And we're trying to synchronize everything so that while the patient's being monitored, uh, body sound, text, uh, the tel uh, 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 tactile, or any kind of uh, vital sign acquisition, we actually can synchronize on one timeline to be able to give uh, some kind of a, a, a sense of the various uh, input to make a better diagnostics for that. So this, this one centered around these uh, uh, two technologies. We got the uh, NSF uh, future work uh, kind of a planning grant. We have uh, now at the moment, we have extension of one year extension there. And we just uh, submitted from March that uh, larger grant that is actually extension or continuation of this planning grant is under review at the moment. And we obviously, uh, this uh, future work program is actually trying to educate or give opportunity for the students to learn about this kind of a healthcare related technology to be a biomedical related workforce, uh, especially for us in central Florida, we have a lack of those things already estimated, uh, knowing that the Lake Nona area is uh, rapidly growing. And in generally, a lot of uh, medical related, high tech related medical uh, personnel is uh, needed in the near future. So this uh, planning grant was about that. And uh, our uh, current grant, we put it in, is under review also uh, materialized a lot uh, in that area. So in there, I've been looking for telemedicine expert MD, which is very difficult to find somehow, but I'm still looking for them who can join that effort to make this uh, telemedicine possible in future. I believe that uh, Florida, uh, the Department of Health and also some of the uh, local hospitals and uh, insurance companies and all that, I, they're probably interested in this uh, concept because we cannot avoid this is coming in the near future of the telemedicine. The other uh, projects ongoing now is the semi-robotic laparoscopic assistance system. This is uh, something that we're trying to fill the gap between the complete uh, uh, normal laparoscopy, a uh, conventional laparoscopy surgery, which is just to use a tool and poke into the belly and do all this kind of surgical procedure while other people holding the camera inside of the belly. 
And the, the opposite end of the most advanced laparoscopic surgery system is obviously Da Vinci robot, as you all know, but there's nothing in between. So something even very simple laparoscopic surgery, sometimes you have to use Da Vinci robot. And if it's not equipped with a Da Vinci robot, it's very difficult to do a laparoscopic surgery because you have a less chance to train all these people. So what we're trying to develop here is to develop a very simple uh, device to provide only two very important key kind of function, which is stability of overall code in the system. So the, all the tools actually hinged by the uh, fixed code in the system. So the cameras and everything's not wobble around. And also breakability means that you have a foot pedal so you can actually leave whole tool freeze and you can hands off and you re-engage. So we made this through a senior design team, a couple of iterations, and we have that uh, available. So we haven't put any proposal with us. So we're trying to put the proposal into, uh, especially for the DOD, because in a less equipped hospital in the forefront of the battlefield, uh, having the laparoscopic kind of a capability, I believe it was really, really important. And lastly, a skull-based robot for the orthognathic surgery. Basically, it's kind of a jaw surgery. So we've been developing a kind of a small uh, uh, robotic device that can, can be sitting on the skull. So we can actually do that uh, um, a surgery with a precision kind of a uh, locationing of the uh, implants and all that. So I've been looking for the maxillofacial surgeon and the imaging expert for that. And again, it's a little bit difficult. We uh, submitted this uh, paper, uh, the proposal before, and obviously criticized by the lack of the surgeon. So I'm trying to actually find the one for that. Now, for the quick future plan, uh, as I explained earlier about all this, my proposals, I'm going to put it in multiple places and NSF, NIH, DOD. Uh, luckily, I had all three uh, agents experience, so I a kind of a better understanding how they do. So I'm trying to keep focusing on those areas and looking for the telemedicine MD, military labs, and to collaborate. And the long term, uh, I really want to uh, kind of uh, implement my kind of uh, you know, study here for actual patient benefit. This is something my ultimate goal and I'm pushing on persistently all the time. And also educational uh, kind of integration, which I developed in here UCF, I think it's become really, really important and realize that the importance of the law in terms of you know, training students to be a workforce in our society. So I, I will still kind of focus on that STEM and NSF programs to you know, teach our undergraduate students. At the same time, the, for the long term, a workforce readiness improvement, which uh, I submitted um, on the review now. I really hope that this funding coming in so that we can have a long-term plan to uh, improve the area in, the, uh, in our research. So here are the, uh, our collaborators, my collaborators, and who is uh, involved in the more than one time of the uh, research proposals. And here's a uh, previous and current support. And these are little symbols of the collaborators that we are working on. I have a four PhD student at the moment, one master and a seven fire student. Fire students actually come from the College of Medicine. I have a dozen, I think a more undergraduate students, mostly from uh, funded by either NIH or the Excel had all these kind of little programs they have and mostly uh, mechanical and two uh, honor school students at the moment. That's all I have today.